Okay, hi there, welcome. Let's look at uh, another six multiple choice questions focusing this time on the theory of contestable markets. Uh, contestable markets is a market structure given increasing importance by exam boards, particularly as a contrast to the slightly unrealistic theory of perfect competition. So this is a type of market structure that's well worth understanding and uh, it'll really help the analysis and evaluation. Question one, a monopoly firm makes only normal profit in the long run. What is most likely to explain this? There are your four options, A, B, C and D. Have a go, please. Press the pause button. Have a go at question number one. So here's a monopoly making only normal profit in the long run. Of course, we'd assume that monopolies would be able to make, continue to make super normal or monopoly profits in the long run. So something must explain it. And the answer here is D, that the market is contestable. Uh, the key thing here is that in the contestable market, uh, there could be some actual competition, but the threat of competition might be sufficiently uh, severe to encourage firms to price closer to competitive levels. And that brings down the profits they make. Question two, which assumption is essential for a market to be contestable? Which assumption is essential of those options there for a market to be contestable? Have a go, please, at question number two. That's important in the exam, uh, for the exam to understand the conditions required for contestability uh, between competing suppliers. And the key answer, or the key assumption here is B, that firms are free to enter and leave the market. In other words, there are no significant barriers to entry and also uh, barriers to exit key assumption of a contestable market is the absence of what's called sunk costs. Here's question three, a diagram to work with here. And the diagram on the right hand side there shows the cost and revenue curves of a firm in a contestable market. It's currently charging the profit maximizing price OP1 at output OQ1. In order to deter entrance the firm decides to change its aim to sales maximizing. And the question is, what price of those options there, OP2, OP3, OP4, OP5, what price will achieve this new aim? So have a go, please, at question number three. So profit maximization, of course, is where marginal cost meets marginal revenue. That will be an output of Q1, giving a price of P1. Sales maximization is where you achieve the highest output possible consistent with making at least normal profit in other words breaking even it's the intersection between average cost and average revenue which is output q4 which implies a price of p4 at that price the, the revenue per unit just equals the cost per unit and you're making only normal profit question four which of the four measures there would lead to greater contestability in the bus transport market. So think about a uh, city uh, in your country where you're trying to make the market more contestable. Which of those measures might make the market more contestable over time? Have a go please at question four. So in this situation, um, the answer, the correct answer is B, fair access. Um, better provision of information might well increase demand for bus transport. It doesn't necessarily make the market more contestable. Mergers would, would actually increase the monopoly power of the big players. Uh, likewise, the cost of licenses, of course, is a barrier to entry. So fair access is important. And this is quite important in many industries, giving open access to the market, allowing, for example, a new bus company spaces and slots in a bus station so they can operate uh, some routes. Two questions to go. Here's question five. Which of these is not considered to be an example of a sunk cost? Sunk cost, by the way, of course, is a cost that you have to pay if you leave a market. And the higher are the sunk costs, the less contestable is, is the industry. So which of those four options there, A, B, C and D, is not considered to be an example of a sunk cost? Have a go, please, at question number five. What did you go for with this one? Sunk costs, barriers to exit, a cost that uh, if you decide to leave the industry, if things don't go as well as you predicted, you may have to face some costs. We're looking for the, the odd one out. Well, the answer is C. All of the others are sunk costs. The loss of business reputation, you might leave your customers in the lurch if they can't get replacement parts and things. 
uh, having already previously bought your product. Uh, writing off the value of assets is where you have to have a fire sale of maybe specific items of capital equipment and you have to write off uh, their value. And of course there could be some cancellation project, uh, cancellation costs if you've committed money to a project and you then cancel it when you leave the market there may be some costs that you still have to bear. Downturn in market demand is not really a sunk cost in that sense. And here's the final question. If the five firm concentration ratio is 8% what is the likely market structure? The five firm concentration ratio is 8%. The market structure is such that. What do we think for question six? Concentration ratio, of course, is a way of measuring the degree to which a handful of firms dominate the market. And with an oligopoly, for example, if the top five firms have more than 60% percent of the market we say that's a contestable uh, an oligopoly <laughs> this one is low this is eight uh, percent so even the top five firms barely have one tenth of the market in total so the answer is it's likely to be a highly contestable market not necessarily perfect competition and, and this is not really a, I mean perfect competition there's so many firms that no one firm has any pricing power um, and of course uh, D is wrong uh, because if you've got a lot of firms in the market, consumers have significant choice for many close substitutes, and hence the demand curve for any one firm is likely to be price elastic. So the answer there is B. Well, there we go. Six questions on contestable markets. If you got them all right, then that's 100%. So congratulations. Stay safe, stay focused, and hopefully see you again sometime soon.